tired of talking here at the Rusty Rabbit today, but we're going to complete this one part of the series, right? That way all you out there with a 77 through 80 mile vehicle know exactly how to fix your car, and I can rest easier. So what's left to cover? Well, if you've got air, and you've got fuel, and you've got spark, and everything seems to check out, and your car still is not running right, you could have a problem with your emissions control system. Volkswagens, thank God, didn't have a whole lot of emissions control systems on them. Some of the very early models with carburetors came with smog pumps and catalytic converters and a whole bunch of other crud on there, EGR valves and so on and so forth. But most models, uh, 77 through 80, did not come with catalytic converters and did not have smog pumps. What they do have usually is an EGR system, which is a pretty rudimentary system. And what the EGR system does stands for exhaust gas recirculation, and it means just that. At certain temperatures and at certain RPMs and during certain operating conditions, the EGR valve will open up and allow exhaust fumes back into the intake manifold to be reburned. The secondary burn is supposed to make less emissions. It's possible that it works. I, I really don't know. I, I've never really on a Volkswagen noticed the difference. What you will notice if the EGR valve has gone bad is a problem with your drivability. If the EGR valve were to be damaged and to jam open, in other words, corrosion, crud, hydrocarbons, stuff has gotten in there over the last 20 years. Moisture has caused that thing to seize in the open position. What you're going to have is a hesitation, an idle problem, uh, maybe a not a idle at all, uh, because exhaust fumes are going to be pulled into that intake manifold in all conditions. At higher RPMs and at higher temperatures, this won't be that noticeable, but at idle, you're going to notice. It. That 14 to 1 air to fuel ratio that I talked about, it comes into play here again. Exhaust fumes have a much lower content of oxygen. They also have pollutants in them, unburnable pollutants. Some are burnable, but most are not. At idle, if you're getting unburnable pollutants into your intake system, as well as a lack of oxygen, it's going to cause issues. So you're going to check that EGR valve. The EGR valve is located near the cold start injector and by the idle air motor. And this is what it looks like. It's bolted to the block right here. This port goes into your intake manifold system. This port comes from your exhaust system and is connected by a tube that looks like this. That tube vents the exhaust fumes into your intake manifold. You'll notice on the EGR valve there's also a vacuum line. It sits right there. That vacuum line is what controls whether the EGR valve is open or closed. The vacuum line from there runs across the intake manifold to the other side. And by the water outlet, there's a sensor called a vacuum switch, a vacuum temperature switch. That switch is going to allow that vacuum to either be applied or not be applied, depending on engine temperature. So your vacuum line is going to travel from that vacuum switch off to the vacuum distributor. And again, that vacuum distributor decides whether or not to open or close that EGR valve depending on engine load conditions. High RPMs, yes. Low RPMs, no. So, if you've got a car that's running poorly and you want to test to see if your EGR valve is the issue, the way to check it is to hook a vacuum line from here directly to intake manifold. The vacuum from your intake manifold should open that valve and cause the car to run poor. The RPM should drop, the car should run poorly. If it doesn't, or if your car's already running like crap and you notice no change when you do that, chances are your EGR valve is jammed open. The way to fix it is to remove it from the car, two 10 millimeter bolts, attach it to the intake manifold, and I believe that's a uh, 19 or a yeah, 19. You want to take that loose there, you'll have to use a hammer to knock it free because it's uh, usually rusted into place, and decarbonize it. Uh, pick a screwdriver, some brake clean, some lubricants, try to get that thing freed. If you can, you'll have to replace it don't email Eric. I don't know where to find them. They're not available new anymore for this model and used. You're liable to find one in the same condition as the one in your car. If you live in a non-emissions county or a non-emissions part of the country, you can always block off the port and thereby fix the problem that way. You can take some JB Weld and plug that hole right there, let it harden, hook your exhaust system back up, and run the car. If that was the problem, that will cure the problem. 
If it wasn't, well, you've just taken the UGR system and killed it. <laughs> but that uh, could very well be an issue on a Volkswagen. It won't show a vacuum leak because when you spray around it, air is not getting in from the outside. Air is getting in from the exhaust system. So it can be a kind of tricky thing to hide. So that just about covers the uh, emission system on a Volkswagen. Uh, some cars have a catalytic converter. I think uh, some 80 models do. Trucks don't, but the sedans have a uh, catalytic converter. I'm not sure about the 77 and 78 models, but the 79 and 80, uh, 79 definitely does not have a uh, catalytic converter. Catalytic converter can cause a problem. If it's operating in the proper range and it's not damaged, you'll never notice it's there. Maybe a slight lack of power versus a car that didn't have it, but really I think most of that's in people's heads. A good high flow EGR system, um, catalytic converter system, is going to operate just fine. What won't operate fine is if you've had a fuel problem, a mixture problem, an emissions related problem, any kind of problem with your car that you've ignored for an excessive amount of time. A poor running car that you put up with and you drive back and forth to work for six, seven months is going to cause damage to your catalytic converter. That damage is first indicated by less power. As time goes on, you'll start to notice a rattle underneath your car. That is the material, the catalyst material inside your catalytic converter melting and reforming into a hardened ball. Normally, this causes big problems. You'll notice you're driving up a hill and power drops off drastically. Why is that? Because the ball that's now what used to be your catalytic converter rolls back and plugs the exhaust. If you have no way to get free flowing exhaust, you're not going to have any power. When you level your car back out, the ball rolls forward, your car gets power again. It could definitely be an issue with your car if you're having those kind of things. How do you deal with it? You replace the catalytic converter if you're in a town that, or a county that needs emissions. If not, you take the catalytic converter off the car, which is time consuming because they're usually rusted in place, and you do what's called gutting the catalytic converter. You take a large hard object, sharp, and you smash the interior out of that catalytic converter, the ball. You break it up and let it pass through. Then you bolt the catalytic converter back on the car, and your problem is solved. So that's emission systems on uh, Volkswagens, and there's two cures for you. Uh, you know, this is not a legal way. If you live in California, you got to fix them. I don't know where to find the parts anymore. I know you can get a catalytic converter that's uh, you know universal fit. EGR valves, that's a different story. But take it from me, Eric, owner of the Rusty Rabbit, you are now qualified to go out and work on Volkswagen Rabbits for a living. It's a shame, however, that there are no Volkswagen Rabbits to work on for a living, or you and I would both be rich. Anyway, that's it. You've spent the last hour and a half learning about Volkswagen fuel, ignition, air, and now emission systems. You're a professional. Congratulations. This one's on me.